Hello, uh, my name is John Sanfi, and um, what I'd like to present today is a short presentation um, presenting an argument that I've developed over the last year or so, which I think um, solves a hard problem. Um, I think the argument is, is deductive and it's based on premises that are certain. So uh, I think it's a proof that, um, this, that consciousness has causal uh, effects in the world uh, and that's sufficient to establish a principle that breaks the, the stranglehold of the hard problem. Uh, so I'm talking about a simultaneity. Um, what I mean by simultaneity is the um, is the simultaneity between something we are conscious of and and the fact of being conscious. So if, uh, when we see something red, uh, the redness exists in our presence as conscious observers. It's it's um, a simultaneity between observer and observed. Um, so let's uh, let's first of all just spell out what we mean by the hard problem because it's it's uh, easy to forget that the hard problem is all about physical causality, and by the principle of supervenience, what that means is that for any change in the mental state, there must be a corresponding physical change. Um, which begs the question, you know, why do mental states need to exist at all, since all the work is done at the physical level? Uh, there's nothing else for a mental state, there's nothing else that a mental state can do which would make any noticeable difference in, in the real world, in the physical world. So, observer observed simultaneity, as I say, it's, the, it's that we are conscious of something, um, even if that something is the fact that we are conscious, uh, there is always um, there is always something to be conscious of. So we'll start the argument by establishing what is completely certain. Um, we know that something is happening. Uh, we know that it's happening now. But we also know, uh, and this is the key thing, we also know that we are not consciously causing what is happening. If we were consciously causing it, we would be conscious of that fact. And um, this is true even if the universe were nothing and the only thing that existed was our own disembodied consciousness. We would know for certain that we were not consciously causing this state of consciousness. Um, if we were consciously causing our own consciousness, then we could, we could self-terminate at any moment. Um, we we can't we we are not consciously causing reality even if that only reality is is the fact that we are conscious or our own consciousness um, and this is the key thing um, because what it means is that uh, what it means is that um, it is only possible to be certain that we are not consciously causing our own consciousness our existence of any sort or the observed of any sort. It's only possible to know for certain that we're not consciously causing it when the observing frame of reference is simultaneous with the observed. Um, if it were non-simultaneous with the observed, then we, we wouldn't have any, we wouldn't be able to conceptualize the possibility of a disembodied observing consciousness. We wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't be able to uh, hypothesize that consciousness is, that reality, the whole of reality is a solipsist ontology of some sort, um, or is independently physical. Those alternatives, those choices could not arise. And that's sufficient to prove, without doubt, I think, that uh, consciousness, the simple presence of consciousness, is sufficient to create choice, to create uncertainty, to create the possibility for hypotheses, for conceptual con concepts that simply would not arise otherwise. Um, and that's sufficient to break the strangled role of the hard problem. It establishes as a firm principle that consciousness has causal power. So that's really the essence of, of the talk. As I said, it's a very short talk. There is one more slide here. And then, um, yes, it's just really to say that this, is, this talk is a very short poster style presentation. Um, there is a longer uh, argument. Um, I've submitted a paper which is under review at the moment. Um, I'm happy to send it to you. I mean, even if it's not published, I obviously hope it is published, but if it isn't, I'm still, I can send it to you if anyone's interested. This is my email address. Um, thank you for, for watching. <laughs>